right? Another word for shape is anatomy. And uh, it's crucially important for me as a surgeon that I can identify abnormal anatomy. But it's even more important for me that I can identify normal anatomy and that I understand normal anatomy. Now, another word for understanding is model. And generally speaking, anatomists and surgeons re rarely use the term model, but hopefully we'll change that here this morning. Now, it might come as a surprise to you that although I, I'm an intestinal surgeon, which means I operate on the bowel for cancer of the colon or the rectum or inflammatory bowel disease, I spend most of my time avoiding the intestine. Okay? And I operate tediously, painstakingly preparing a structure called the mesentery. And the mesentery connects all of your intestine with the rest of your body, with the systems of your body. Now, it'll also come as a surprise to you that the understanding and the teaching that we have had in relation to the mesentery is incorrect at many different points. And this has been the teaching that we have had over the last hundred years. Remarkable when you consider it. Now, this animation is going to show you the understanding or the teaching that we have had of the mesentery. And you're going to see the intestine come in here next. And you will see the mesentery, which is going to be in yellow, come into the picture. There you see it. There are two really important points to bear in mind here. The first is that according to this model, there are multiple mesentries, several mesentries. It's a complex model. It's, it's not quite how nature generally does things. The other thing you'll recognize is that on the right side, in other words, the right side of my intestine, there's no mesentery. And on the left side, there's no mesentery according to this particular model. Okay, in 2008, I was working as a trainee and surg in, uh, surgical trainee. I was doing an observership where you just watch, and I noticed the surgeon who was operating, who was a world-renowned surgeon, was operating on the right colon and on the left colon, and he was operating on a mesentery. So when he was operating on the right, removing it, he was operating on a right mesentery. And similarly, on the left, whenever he was operating there, he was operating on a mesentery. So structures which, according to our anatomic texts, should not exist. Then I went to the Cleveland Clinic and spent a year training there with some truly wonderful people. We asked the question as to whether the mesentery is present on the right side or on the left side. And we proved in studies that, yes, it is actually present on the right and it's on the left. Now, if it's present on the right side and it's present on the left side, and we already know that it's there in the middle, then it's not a huge leap of the imagination to wonder, could this be one structure? Is it just simply one structure, and not the complex multiplicity of structures that we were previously thought? And when I came back to Limerick, uh, we did a collaborative study with the Department of Anatomy in Galway, and we proved that, yes, the mesentery is just one structure. And this animation will show you the new mesentery as we understand it. The mesentery is the structure in yellow. And you will see that it is a big structure. It fans out from its origin. It intersects the entire length of the intestine, all six feet of intestine. So this is a huge structure biologically. If you were on your holidays and if you were swimming in the ocean and a six-foot-long shadow went underneath you, you wouldn't be long getting out of the water. So six feet in biologic terms is, quite frankly, enormous. And it's remarkable to think that there was a structure within us that was six feet long, uh, almost hidden in plain sight, as it were. Okay, so it was features such as this, its size, its continuity, its distinctiveness, that led us to make the bold suggestion in November last year that perhaps the mesentery should be redesignated as an organ in itself. Now, importantly, I'm not saying a new organ, because we're not the first to have suggested this, and we're not the first to have described it as an organ. 
And the history of the mesentery, the story of it, is truly remarkable, not least because of the individuals who were involved in it, but because, in essence, we're right back where we started from over 500 years ago. In 1888, a world-renowned surgeon called Frederick Treves put down the description that was indoctrinated in literature and which became what we were taught over the next 120 or 130 years. And he described multiple mesentries. But Treves in 1888 was really only echoing none other than a guy called Henry Gray of Gray's Anatomy. Not the film, not the series, the actual book. And Henry Gray in 1858 introduced a very simple term, mesenteries, plurality. In other words, there were multiple mesenteries according to Henry Gray. We don't know why he used this word. Unfortunately, as uh, he died young as a surgeon and his reference bibliography is relatively deficient. In addition, there was little interest in the mesentery. It seemed to lack order. But if you go back a further 300 years, back to the 1550s, and back even further to the times of da Vinci, Vesalius, and Eustatius, and you will find that the mesentery was drawn as one single structure, and it was referred to as the mesenterium, one organ, 500 years ago. And perhaps the best illustration that we have of that is this particular image by Eustatius. And Eustatius produced this image in the 1550s. And you'll see from his image that the mesentery is one structure. And interestingly, if you look at it, it has a spiral shape. Starts in the middle, goes over to the right, up and around and down into the pelvis. Now remarkably, Eustatius's book fell out of circulation in the 1550s, only to be recirculated in the 1700s, but by then the game was over, I'm afraid, for Eustatius. But compare the image of Eustatius with the image that was produced in November last year by our medical illustrator, Dara Walsh. Both mesentries, on the right and the left here, are continuous, they're one structure. And both have a spiral conformation a spiral shape. Now, I know that Eustatius couldn't have known Dara Walsh, and Dara Walsh, I can tell you, didn't know Eustatius. So there's a phenomenal overlap here in what was depicted 500 years ago and what was drawn in November last. And that brings me to perhaps one of the most important aspects of this story. In November last year, Dara Walsh, a medical illustrator in the University Hospital Limerick, overcame one of the major problems that we had with the mesentery. It's a fatty structure. If you take it out of the abdomen and throw it against the wall, it'll splotch against the wall, and its shape will have no resemblance to the shape that it had when it was in the abdomen. And that is an anatomist's and a surgeon's nightmare, because when we take it out, we can't make conclusions in relation to its shape, because on the inside, it's very different. And Dara overcame this problem by using 3D digital sculpting technologies, and he drew the image that you see here from 2016, and this image has gone viral uh, all over the world. So, as I said, we're not the first to suggest that the mesentery is an organ. But, historically, we are right back where we started from, with one important difference. And the difference is that science has evolved enormously over the last 500 years. And we can now ask the same questions of the mesentery as we would of any organ. What is its function? What's it made up of? Are there diseases associated with it? Can we treat these diseases? Do abnormalities of the mesentery affect the rest of the body? And what I'd like to do in the second half of this talk now is just demonstrate exactly how uh, the mesentery does fulfill the criteria of an organ. And I would hope that whilst I'm going through these questions and answering them, that you will see the wondrous grandeur of nature at work at the level of the mesentery. So the first question, what does it do? Okay, well if you remember, I drew an image, uh, I will showed you an image from Dara Walsh, and you could see that the mesentery was spiral. Starts in the middle, goes over to the right side, up the top of her abdomen, and back down into the pelvis. 
Now, why on earth would nature work against gravity, which is what it's doing here? It's propelling intestinal contents down the middle, over the right, up against gravity, and again, across the top of our abdomen. Why would it do that? We don't know, but what we do know is that if you look at animals that walk on all four, the mesentery in these animals has a very different shape, and it's just simply folded back and forth, and it flops down in their abdomen as they walk along. And you have to go up along the order of species, up to chimpanzees and to gorillas, until you actually begin to see the shape of the mesentery that we have as humans, raising the tantalizing possibility and suggestion that somewhere along the evolutionary tree, a change occurred in the shape and the conformation of the mesentery that meant that we could stand upright, we could up, walk upright, I could give this talk here today, and we could do everything that we do in the upright position. Other functions, there are numerous functions. The mesentery is the first structure to develop within the embryo. So when we're less than a millimeter in size, the mesentery develops first. The liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the intestine, and all aspects of it, develop within the mesentery. Almost like a womb, cocooned within the mesentery, the liver, the spleen, and all of these organs develop. So no mesentery, no liver, no spleen, no intestine, no us. So it is a crucially important structure embryologically. It's positioned between the intestine and the rest of the body. Why is that important? Well, all of the signals that come down through the intestine are sampled within the mesentery. And then the mesentery tells the body what to do in response to those signals. So it acts like a kind of a signal box centrally positioned within your abdomen. What if we didn't have a mesentery? That's always a good uh, point to start at when you're asking about the function of an organ. If we didn't have a mesentery, then all six feet of our intestine, and in some people it's up to eight feet or greater than two meters in length, would have to be directly attached to the inside of our abdomen. It would be up and down folded to the inside of our abdominal wall, instead of hanging in the three-dimensional space of our abdomen. Now, if the intestine were directly attached, it's hard to see how it could contract and relax and propel its contents forward from the top to the bottom. It simply couldn't. Now, it's feasible that it might, but we would be extremely small as a species if it were. And we probably would have been eaten somewhere in evolution by a large animal such as an ant, or we would have been lost in a flood caused by a gentle drizzle. So the development of the mesentery is crucially important in the development of man as we know him. Are there diseases associated with the mesentery? There are multiple diseases. There's over 40 diseases that either arise in the mesentery or spread to involve the mesentery. And in the recent past, we're starting to develop technologies and clinical approaches that exploit the mesentery. And the best surgeons are the surgeons who can exploit the shape of the mesentery in removing a colon or a rectal cancer. And in the more recent past, we've demonstrated that for patients with inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, a debilitating disease that affects people at the prime of their life, that by inclusion of the mesentery as part of the surgical approach, we can improve the outcomes for these patients. What's it made up of? Well, this is truly fascinating. Astronomers are looking at frontiers and exploring frontiers, galaxies after galaxies, on an enormous scale. Particle physicists are smashing atoms together and looking at what's coming out about a kilometer under the surface of Europe. But there are frontiers in us that are entirely unchartered, and many of them are in the mesentery. If you think about it, it has to fan out and it has to intersect the entire intestine. And that intersection is over six feet in length. Every single signal, bacterial, immunological, viral, every signal that goes from the intestine to the body and the body to the intestine has to go through that area. But there isn't a single study in the entire body of literature anywhere that has characterized that particular intersection. Remarkable. OK. If it's an organ, then like any organs, can it affect the rest of the body? And the answer to that is yes, and there are multiple examples how. 
Before I explain that, though, I must explain one term, and that term is visceral adiposity. It's a fancy clinical term. And what it effectively means is beer belly fat. We all know that beer belly fat and increases in beer belly fat predispose us to the development of type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, ischemic heart disease, stroke, and various other manifestations. But if you look at CT scans of the abdomen, and if you reconstruct these, then you will see that the mesentery is the single largest component of beer belly fat. The mesentery is the reason I look like I do, and it's the reason why my wife gives out to me repeatedly for looking like this. And it's the reason why I'm wearing a loose-fitting jacket here today to hide my abdominal contours. <laughs> but it's the mesentery that is primarily responsible for that in men. And sorry, ladies, but it catches up with ye too because it happens in your postmenopausal phase of life. So, the mesentery affects systemic diseases, and it predisposes us to variations of diabetes, high blood pressure, ischemic heart disease, and others. Now, at the start of this talk, I asked you, or I asked, if you could ask yourselves a question. And the question is, what aspect of the mesentery occupies your thoughts? What aspect of the mesentery stimulates your imagination? or potentially evokes an emotional response in you. I'd like you to do that now again. Is it the fact that an evolutionary change in the mesentery was probably crucial in us adopting an upright position and me giving this talk in a vertical position today? Is it the fact that there are diseases in the mesentery that we're now able to counteract and develop strategies and treat in a much more effective manner? Is it the fact that there are regions in the mesentery, frontiers, that are entirely unchartered from a scientific perspective? There are multiple aspects of the mesentery that now remain to be discovered. Perhaps the most important point is the following. We now, for the first time, fully understand its shape. Because we understand its shape, we can understand its function. And a similar event occurred not so long ago when we understood the shape of DNA and you had the birth of genomics. And I would argue that because we now understand the shape of the mesentery, we can systematically investigate it. And the systematic investigation of any organ is called the science of that organ. And mankind is at a very, very exciting point in its history because we are at the start of the science of the mesentery. Thank you for listening.